So you're a Ducatista, or maybe you'd like to be, but how bad do you want it? I mean, do you really want it? Because it's not an easy fandom to commit to. You gotta download Babel and learn Italian. You gotta drink espresso, black, no more caramel fraps. But the hardest part is understanding the technical history, the evolution of the brand, and the way it directly corresponds with their racing pedigree. A consequence of hand-built, cutting-edge, limited production motorcycles is that they have the freedom to change and update all the frickin' time, unlike most manufacturers who tend to make the same motorcycles for a decade or more. <clears throat> Harley Davidson. Ducati likes to push the envelope and switch it up pretty regularly. They go up in displacement, down in displacement, air-cooled, liquid-cooled, L-twin, V4, Desmo, banana, 848, 916, 998, 999. Are we talking about motorcycles or area codes here? It is really hard to tell after a while, but luckily, Papa Yam is here to help you sort all this out so you can achieve the true Ducatista mode and fact check everyone you meet. I want to talk to you today about some of the best motorcycles made by Ducati. It is my personal opinion, and spoiler alert, there are no Superleggeras or Panigales on the menu this evening. Before we get started, I'd like to thank us for sponsoring the video. I'll tell you more about our awesome community later on. Make sure you click the notification bell as well so you don't miss all the fresh new videos dropping. We've got big things in the works here that you're not going to want to miss. Okay, let's get started. I hope you got your adult Adderall prescription refilled because this is going to require a little bit more focus and attention than normal. Right off the bat, Ducati has competed in a lot of races over the year and have won 407 of them. The list of victories is almost as long as the amount of companies that have owned Ducati since 1926. This desire to continue to win races and championships was instrumental in the constant evolution of their motorcycles, more so than other motorcycle manufacturers who were prioritizing selling glorified scooters to suburban normies. There's that common trope that Ducati actually sells motorcycles so they can just keep on racing. The first motorcycle that is important to mention at the top is the Ducati 916. The 916 Superbike was released in 1994 as the natural successor of the A51 and 888 race bikes. The A51 had shown some promise on the racetrack in the late 80s, culminating with Raymond Roach securing the World Superbike Championship in 1990. Ducati then increased the displacement for the production model to 888cc and rider Doug Polen won the 1991 and 1992 World Superbike Championships again. After a loss to Kawasaki in 1993, they went to the drawing board and developed what is now regarded as not only one of the most iconic Ducatis, but one of the most iconic motorcycles in general, the 916. The 916 has been considered to be one of the most beautiful motorcycles ever designed, and it's kind of hard to disagree. Designer Massimo Tamburini was said to have deliberately given this motorcycle a sexual allure. If that is the case, I really think it could have benefited from a hentai wrap and some fleshlights, but otherwise, yeah, it's a pretty hot piece of motorcycling design. The design of the the 916 is celebrated and instantly recognizable with the underseat exhaust, single-sided swing arm, dual square headlights, and race-ready bodywork. The 916 shared a similar 90-degree liquid-cooled L-twin engine as the 851 and 888 models while increasing the stroke to create the 916 cc's of displacement. The engine made less peak power than Japanese race bikes at the time, but led a broader torque curve for more power on tap across the rev range. The 916 made 114 horsepower and 67 foot-pounds of torques. Ducati won four Superbike World Championships with the 916 in 1994, 1995, 1996, and 1998, the year that the 916 saw the end of production. After the 916, Ducati produced the 996 and 998 models, which were very similar to the 916 with an increased displacement and engine improvements. The 996 was actually the iconic Ducati in Matrix Reloaded, which led to the special edition green color away from the 998 model the following year. But anyway, in 2003, they began producing the next motorcycle on our list, the Ducati 999. The 999 stirred up a lot of controversy amongst Y2K Ducatistas as many considered it to be an ugly motorcycle compared to what Ducati had been producing prior. The early 2000s had many unpleasant stylistic choices, so we can cut Ducati some slack on this one. The 999 was Ducati's Jinko Jean era motorcycle, and it still slaughtered on the racetrack, achieving 63 World Superbike wins and three championships in 2003, 2004, and 2006. Despite its aesthetic shortcomings, the 999 was one of the best performing motorcycles of the time, which many riders claimed to have handled better than the 916 despite its reverence. 
By the 2006 model year, the 999R made 148 horsepower and 86 foot-pounds of torque from its 999cc L-twin engine. In 2006, this motorcycle cost just shy of $18,000, which equates to like $26,000 today adjusted for inflation, and that's quite the pretty penny. So in short, the first two Ducatis we recommend are the Ducati 916 and the Ducati 999. But in 2007, Ducati dropped the 1098. By 2007, Ducati's 999 was significantly down on peak power compared to the other the motorcycles in the class and as a result Ducati went full Karen mode and asked to speak to the manager of World Superbike and requested to allow more displacement for two-cylinder motorcycles in order to compete fairly with the four-cylinder engines used by the competition. As a result Ducati won the Superbike World Championship in 2008 and 2011 with the 1098. Why did they not win in 2009? Well a certain Ben Spees came through and absolutely smattered everybody. That was a great year for Superbike. The 1098 shared a lot more design similarities with the previous bike like the 916 and the 996 models like a single-sided swing arm and underseat exhaust. In production from 2007 until 2009, the 1098 was regarded as having the highest torque to weight ratio of any production motorcycle at the time. The 1098 made 160 horsepower and 90 foot-pounds of torques while weighing in at just 440 pounds. The 1098 then evolved into 1198 despite the fact that the 1098R model already had an 1198cc engine. See what I mean about the peculiarities of these bikes? Then after the 1198, there was the 1199 that also only had an 1198cc engine. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, I'm done with race bikes for now. Let's see what bikes Ducati has been working on during this time for more civilian riders. And did you know we actually gave away a Ducati 1098 last year. No, that's not code for we blew it up and it disappeared on the channel. Nope, we gave it away. We give away motorcycles all the time. It's no Ducati, but we actually have a rumbly air-cooled V-twin Roadster 1200 from Harley-Davidson as our current modern classic giveaway. If you were so inclined to get involved in that giveaway, there are a few ways to go about it. You could sign up for a membership at yamanoob.co and join our Discord server where we talk about bikes, swap memes, and compare spec sheet girth. Plus, I do some live streams for the members and can contribute to the fun contests on Yamcasts. Memberships are as low as 5 bucks a month and will automatically enter you to win one of our giveaway bikes. Or you can head over to shop.yamanoob.co, buy some cool riding gear, tools, or bike parts, and every dollar you spend there will get you an entry to win those bikes as well. Plus, members on yamanoob.co will get 10% off on our store, so you can double down and go for both. Click the links down below, become a member over on yamanoob.co, you won't regret it. Now back to the video. A motorcycle that was pivotal to the establishing of Ducati as a household name in motorcycling was the Ducati Monster. Now, the Monster has been produced since 1992 and was an industry frontrunner of what are now commonly referred to as naked bikes. The Monster was such a success, they have sold over 350,000 of them in the past 30 years. Those aren't Honda numbers, but they're pretty impressive for Ducati. The original Ducati Monster had an air-cooled 904cc L-twin that made about 67 horsepower and 60 foot-pounds of torque. Despite its ultimate success, the bike started out as a parts bin special, making use of engines from the 900 Supersport, the trellis frame from the A51 race bike, and the forks from the 750 Supersport. And then fast forward 30 years later, and there have been like 30 iterations of the Monster varying in size and power. There was the 400, 600, 900, 620, 750, 800, 1000, 1100, 696, 796, 1200, 795, and an 821. That's not even a joke. If it were a joke, I would have said the 420 and the 69 Monos. There are literally that many. There's even a Monster Diesel, which is not what you think, unfortunately but a collaboration with the diesel clothing brand. Kind of cringe, but I'll chalk it up to cultural differences and time frames. But the monster that gets the shout out today is the Monster 797, which was the last two valve per head air-cooled L-twin monster manufactured from 2017 until 2020. The Monster 797 has an 803cc L-twin engine. Yes, literally, it is not even a 797cc motorcycle, but why would it be? That would make too much sense for Ducati. Maybe it's something that only would make sense if you're a metric system native, but I really don't understand it. I tried looking up what the code for the model numbers were, and all I found were DTC check engine codes which is kind of funny. Maybe 797 is the amount of cigarettes the engineers and designers smoked while making this bike. Anyway, many of you know I'm very partial to this 803 two-valve air-cooled engine because I own one in my desert sled, and I really, really like it. While not a total powerhouse, this motorcycle is one of the most reliable bikes you can have from Ducati for a fun daily commuter with instantly recognizable styling. It has a air-cooled L-twin engine that makes 73 horsepower and 49 foot-pounds of torque. It's like if the SV650's mom let it stay up past 8.30 and watch PG-13 movies. Based on how many it sold, it would have probably be easier to find a used monster than a used superbike like the 916 or the 999. The next motorcycle shouting out is the Ducati Hyper Motard. The Ducati Hyper Motard is a 
super motard style bike, the OG Supermoto for the Americans in the audience, that has been in production since 2007 and is still available today. Luckily for me, and honestly for you too, this motorcycle has only come in a handful of different configurations over the years. I'm still a little bit cross-eyed from looking at all the different monster variations that were released. The model I want to mention today is the first iteration, the Hyper Motard 1100 that ran from 2007 until 2012. This bike has an air-cooled 1078cc two-valve L-twin engine that makes 90 horsepower and 76 foot-pounds of torque. It has all the high-end components you'd expect from Ducati, like adjustable suspension and Brembo brakes. These bikes are perfect for ripping wheelies, supermoto track days, and just bopping around town wreaking all sorts of havoc. The 1100 is awesome because of its simple design and reliability, dry clutch chatter, and V-twin, <clears throat> L-twin, character. It's like a dirt bike and an Italian sports car combined into one. Pretty cool. I mean, it's got nothing on the DRZ, but it's pretty cool. That is a joke, obviously. The Hyper Mozart 1100 is all the hooligan energy you'd expect from a supermoto with the style, design, and character you'd expect from Ducati. I got the chance to ride one of these back in 2020, and I was just gobsmacked at how much torque it made off idle. It was so much fun to ride, and I really, really liked it. Ducati has had their current Scrambler line of motorcycles since 2015, brought back during the resurgence of classic heritage-style bikes. These bikes are inspired by the original line of Scramblers made by Ducati in the 60s and 70s. These Scramblers of days past had a little air-cooled single-cylinder engines and were designed for flat track and scramble type of riding. Most of the Ducati Scramblers built today are not designed to do much real scramble but are mostly for urban riding with a cool retro look. As many of you know, I have a Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled, and it has proven to be capable of tackling most of the terrain I have challenged it with traversing. The Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled comes equipped with this air-cooled 803 two-valve L-twin engine making 73 horsepower and 49 foot-pounds of torque. This motorcycle has a few upgrades to make it more dirt-worthy than some of the other Scramblers from Ducati, like BP 46mm forks with 9 inches of travel, spoked 17 and 19 inch wheels, and Pirelli Scorpio Rally tires. I've wheelied this thing, I've dumped it, broken it, fixed it, and it really is one of my favorite motorcycles that I own. The Scramblers are some of the only stripped down, air-cooled, simple, and old-school motorcycles you can still get from Ducati, while all the other models compete with the contemporary and advanced motorcycles. The last motorcycle I'd like to mention is the Ducati Super Sport. The Super Sport line of motorcycles were produced by Ducati in some way, shape, or form since 1972, but the era of Super Sport I want to mention were those produced between 1991 and 2007. These bikes were more street-oriented bikes as opposed to the race replica superbikes. From 1991 until 1998, they had a 904cc air-cooled l twin engine making about 84 horsepower and 64 foot-pounds of torque. They were available to be outfitted with either full fairings or half fairings. And by 1999, the Super Sport came with a 992 air-cooled L-Twin that has been described as the most advanced air-cooled Desmo engine ever built by Ducati, making 95 horsepower. These bikes would eventually be discontinued for a decade before being brought back in 2017 with the 937cc Testa Stretta engine and it would relax with sporty position with the Panigale-inspired styling. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm still recovering from trying to make sense of all the different model numbers and engine configurations that Ducati has used over the years, but I hope it has helped paint a picture of Ducati's legacy and some of the best motorcycles they have made over the years. Long live the air-cooled two-valve L-Twin. Fact, the first recorded instance of the name Jessica is in William Shakespeare's play The Merchant of Venice, where Jessica is the daughter of the Jewish moneylender Shylock. It is believed that Shakespeare created this name by anglicizing the spelling of the biblical name Iska, which means vision or sight in Hebrew. Goodbye.